heavenly father once again we thank you for your love your kindness and your glory we thank you because no one loves us like you do thank you for the love of god that is shed abroad in our heart by the holy spirit thank you because for god so loved the world he so loved us that he died he gave himself for us today we receive the love of god today we declare that we are loved by god say i'm loved by god say i'm loved by god say i'm passionately loved by god say the love of god fills my heart say the love of god fills my soul say the love of god fills my mind in the name of the lord jesus christ i'm persuaded of the love of god and because he loves me i know i win because he loves me i overcome his love is on my side not against me in the name of jesus thank you holy father in jesus name we pray amen praise god hallelujah i want us to shout three powerful hallelujahs you know and let's really praise the lord and worship him praise god let somebody shout hallelujah let's go ahead and shout hallelujah hallelujah let's go ahead and shout hallelujah hallelujah look at your neighbor and say it could have been worse if not for god look at them and say it could have been worse if not for god then turn to another neighbor and say it could have been worse if not for god go ahead and shout a big hallelujah praise god please you can have your seat glory and glory and glory hallelujah praise god hallelujah are we ready for the word of god today all right so this will mark this will mark our last teaching on dealing with emotional trauma and wound it's been a powerful month we've cried i don't know if we watched the wednesday service you know as a lady was was it wednesday or sunday i think it was sunday fourth service as one lady was crying i just began to cry because what she was saying brought a lot of stories you know just it was just a lot you know and in case you don't know almost every sunday this month we've been trending on twitter almost every sunday this month and the reason why is that a lot of people are getting blessed someone said oh you was trending on tiktok then they moved to twitter and people are sharing the story so the way you can share the story today if you're watching online or you're on site is to join the conversation on twitter and uh, and push the hashtag hashtag pb speaks they will put the handle there it will help us a lot to get the message out glory to god it will help us a lot to get the message out thank you so that's it so if you don't follow on social media and you watch online or you're in church bring out your phones quickly follow and if the messages if the point really hits you just go on twitter and put it there and push the hashtag pb speaks and more people can hear just because of what you've done with that let's turn our bibles to genesis chapter 1 in verse 10. genesis chapter 1 in verse 10. genesis chapter 1 in verse 10. the bible says and god called the dry land earth and the guardian of the waters he called sea and god saw it was good bible says and god saw let me do, yeah. and god saw it was good verse 11 and god said now let's read the next line together i want to go and god said let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so guess what god did god says that this is what god did when god finished creating the atmosphere like soil wind water and all of those things god says we want to start creating things right now vegetation god says what we're going to do is this we're going to create the first god says i will create the first fruits but so that i don't create the fruit again i'm going to make sure the fruit has what seed inside and the seed would keep producing each other hallelujah can i have my apple just one just one apple who wants to eat an apple here want to eat an apple yeah brakar this wife you have you eaten breakfast today come and eat an apple are you fasting exactly come and eat an apple i want to give you an apple you washed it right thank you yeah come and eat i, I just want to bless you with an apple i thought that you look slightly hungry you know praise god 
So I want to give you the apple to eat. Just eat it and give me the, you know, that seed part inside. That's what I wanted to give me. Yeah. Just keep eating while I'm preaching. So see what God said. See what God said, you know. So start eating. Exactly. Thank you. If you need water, just ask them for water. You know, the Bible says, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and help yielding seed and the fruit yielding fruit after I said, whose seed is in it? So when you see the apple that she's eating, the seed of the apple is within the apple. And why? So that when God wants another apple, he doesn't have to create it by miracle. What does he do? He only gets the seed to produce it. Can I give you something here? This is why Christians struggle financially. They are hoping that their financial life will be a miracle. That's not the will of God for you. A miracle can bring you income, but it takes seed thinking. It takes building streams of income to turn the income into regular income all the time. Can I say this to you? Nobody has become perpetually rich because they got a financial blessing, a financial miracle. No, everybody that became rich eventually became rich. Why? Because they took a financial miracle, turned it into a seed, grew a financial system, and grew. So if you are still the Christian that you are praying for house rent, and when you are, oh, wow, can, can I teach you a way to pray for money? Don't say, Lord, I need house rent. Say, Lord, give me something that can sustain me financially forever. That's how you pray. That's how you pray. Lord, Lord, don't give me. Because if he gives you 10 million today, after one or two months, it's gone. Some of you, after one week, it's gone. But God doesn't want to give you a fruit. He wants to give you a seed. The problem is that when God gives you a financial seed, do you know what to do with it? Because a financial seed means you have to go and do a lot by yourself. Do you have the seed for me? You have to eat it more. If, if you can, it can get to your husband. Call your man to join to eat. Because I need, the, I need that thing to come out. Yeah. I need that thing to come out. Yeah. That's why I gave it to you so your husband can assist you. <laughs> Praise God. So, I, I want to show you something. So, guess what God did? So, Brakadi, eat quickly, eat quickly, eat quickly, eat quickly. Eat quickly. Eat quickly. Don't, don't look at you. Just take it from man. eat quickly. I need that part. I will have eaten, but all the pastors are fasting. Yeah, I need that part quickly. Mm -hmm. That's why I like men. Do we? <laughs> Do you have it? Hey, just eat it. Uh -huh. Just bring. Just let me. Do you have? Uh -huh. Just let me bring it out. You have to eat that for you to come out. Or bite it out for me. You beat it out already. It normally comes in like a small container like this. Yeah. Thank you. You can give me, give me the rest of the apple. Yeah. Give me. So I can just take this from me. C come and see camera. This is what about this is what the Bible is on. This is the apple. This is the apple here. But the apple inside. The apple inside has seed inside. This is a seed. I want to say this apple, the seed, this seed came from inside. Thank you. Yeah, I can give you back your apple. <laughs> so what does this concern to grief and loss? This is the reason. And let me say this here. The purpose of emotional pain and trauma is this. Is for the, the devil wants to destroy a bright future. You know what he does? He puts the seed there. So I will give an example. All of a sudden you see a family... Watch this now. You see a family where everybody gets divorced. And you need to look back. There was someone in that, there was a time in that generation, it was not like that. And a seed was planted. Satan is very smart. Instead of him attacking each person, he just goes into their foundation and puts his seed there. He, he learns it from God. So instead of God producing apple every time, he said there's no need to produce apple every time. Let's just take a seed. Let's take a seed and put the seed there. And that's why if you notice, sometimes people that came from single parents eventually become single parents. A lady was sharing with me 
And she came and she broke down and cried. He said, Pastor, thank you for helping me break the jinx in my family. He said, for my fourth generation, nobody has married. He said, all the women normally have children outside wedlock. He said, I'm outside wedlock. My mother is outside wedlock. My grandmother outside wedlock. He said, I'm the first person that someone came to prostrate for a hand in marriage and got married. He said, the next thing is that for me to get pregnant. Because someone just broke that jinx. It's all a seed. So this thing we're talking about is very powerful. And let me say something here. As much as some of these things can be demonic, a lot of these are habits and behaviors we have learned. For example, and let me just give an example. If you, you know, oh wow. Why is it that a lot of sexual abuse happens to children below 12? Just one reason. That is the best time to rewire them sexually. And just in case you do not know, as much, Father help me with this, with the statistics I'm getting, I got this yesterday, 80% of men were sexually abused between the age of 8 and 16 by their households. And that's why today we have a rising population of promiscuous men. Because when they were young, they were thought sex in an unhealthy way. So when you see that promiscuous man, you wonder, why does it behave like that? But someone tampered with his wiring. And it happened when they were young, when the wiring was flexible. When he's old and he's not flexible, it's very difficult to adjust. As a matter of fact, during one of the series like this, one guy told me, he said that, Pastor, I see sex as nothing, I see women as nothing. I said, what happened to you? Because when someone says that, Pastor, I, I see sex as nothing, I see women as nothing. I said, why do you have this kind of perspective? He said, you know, when I was young, I think about six, our house up began to have sex with me, you know. And, you know, the house up will go in December like they normally go. It's almost as if it will pass a note to the next house help. The next house up will come and just continue that way. So, he just grew up in his mind. Just imagine over the last next 10 years. He said, it became so bad. I just used to have sex. He said, it became so bad that even when the, ax, the house up stopped asking me to have sex, then I would threaten her. And say, I will tell my mom what you did to me in the first place. He said, because all of a sudden, I became an addict. And what Satan wants is to put that seed inside. That seed inside. If you're familiar with our church, that seed inside. And that seed does not only affect you. It's the fact that it affects your family. Because the way you are, you pass it to your children. The way you are, you pass it to your children. You know, the other day, you know, my, my sister-in-law attends our church. That's my brother's wife. And um, she was saying, Pastor B, please stop talking about mom, which is my, you know, which is my late mom. You know, and he said, talk, talk about mom. He said, everybody knows mommy's story in church now. And he was just jesting and talking around. And, you know, I was just reflecting. And I said, when my mother was very harsh and difficult, it was not because she wanted to do be that. She lost her own mother at about three years old. And she never experienced a mother's love. And she was raised by men. And maybe all she gave me was all she was exposed to. And that's why some of you have to release your parents. Because they don't know better. All they gave you is what they were exposed to. But I'm only saying to you that now that you know that the seed, the seed has been there. But you have to do something about the seed. You know why? Because if you don't do something about the seed, the Bible says all of a sudden the seed will grow. The seed will grow. The seed will grow. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Let me read to you just one example of how this emotional seed destroys people. Genesis chapter 49 verse 1 to 4. Genesis 49 verse 1 to 4. We're going to read it quickly. It's about Reuben. You will see people that have big potentials. Their emotional issue will just ruin them. You know, sometimes there's this big thing about DNA this, DNA that, DNA this, DNA that. And sometimes I understand the DNA thing. But sometimes what really happens in the marriage is that something happens someone gets emotional takes a decision in a moment that ruins the whole marriage and that's why when, you know i was reading a story someone said no it cannot not be your child he said because you're the only one i stepped with then he remembered that there was a period they fought and there was a guy that was helping her 
and they had sex and they didn't realize that sex was a child because you just thought it was a one-off. The Bible says, and Jacob called unto his sons and see what it says. Gather yourself together and I will tell you what will be falling in your last days. He said, I want to tell you your end. Okay, continue verse 3. It, it, it says, verse 3, just jump, just, just, just jump, verse 3. It says, Reuben, you are my firstborn. He said, the beginning of my strength. See how powerful Reuben is. He oh. said, Reuben, you are my firstborn. My might. The beginning of my strength. The excellency of dignity. The excellency of power. Verse 4. What did he say? He said, unstable as water. What made him unstable? His emotions. How was he unstable? It was Reuben that went to sleep with the father's wife. His father saw through him and he said, you are a good person. But because you cannot handle your emotion, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. He said that emotion that made you unstable, thou shalt not excel. Have you not asked yourself, why can't I just... How come with all the marriage counseling we got... Our mind has not gotten, gotten better. Most of the time, it's because there's a, there's a pain that makes you misbehave. So when you are in your normal state, you know what to do to make your mind work. But the point is that you are never in your normal state. You're never in your normal state. You're always fearful. And when people go through a lot of pain, they become fearful. And when they become fearful, fear comes out in different ways. Some people become fearful and their fear makes them very aggressive. Some become so fearful and their fear makes them, I don't want to try. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Listen to me, if you didn't go to emotional pain, then you didn't go to childhood trauma, thank God. Do. Ah. Because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, when people are saying, ah, I want to blow. Ah, God, what is happening? I've not blown. God, I want a breakthrough. God, I want a breakthrough. God, I want a breakthrough. And it's not happening. Sometimes you must know that God is hiding you. He's not denying you. The reason why is that early exposure destroys things. Sometimes when you're saying, oh, I want to blow, I want to break through, and it's not happening. It's not God denying you, he's hiding you. Because new levels, new demons, and God is saying, if I expose you early, they will come after you. And that's why in Bible says, God's, Bible says God's way are higher than our own way. In God's wisdom, you know what he does? He puts you in a place nobody can locate you to hide you. That's why you will notice the people that despise are the ones that get to the top. When they were looking for David, they looked for him where? In the house of Jesse. David was in the desert. Why? God hid him there. When they were looking for Jesus, they looked for him in the palace. Jesus was in the manger. God put him somewhere no one could find him. Let me tell you something here. Eh? You think you are suffering. You think it's not working. God is hiding you there. That's why you're in that office and they're making, they think that's it. They're maltreating you. They are not maltreating you. They are, only be, they are only working with God to hide you. Because if they know where you are going to, they will destroy you. The Bible says if they had known or seen the king of glory, they would have not crucified him. They would have walked in hand with Satan to abort God's mission. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And let me say this to you. You hide what is precious to you. I don't know if you heard me. You hide what is precious. So when you say God is hiding me, God is hiding you because you are precious. Have you seen people that have diamond necklace before? You will never find it around the house. But when it's time to go for a big party, they go into that place, they hid it, they bring it and wear it. Because that thing is precious. God is not denying you. God is not frustrating you. You hide what is precious. God is hiding you. So that in the fullness of time, he will put you on. But when he puts you on, nobody can tamper with you again. Because now, you are out of their reach. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I mean, there's a guy, there's a guy, and let me tell you something, when people are exposed too early, he has a problem. 
There's problem with too early exposure. There's a guy I met, and I met him at when he had blown financially. Bid on here. Bid on here. This guy was so rich. He had employees. He was young. Maybe about 30 or 32. But bid on here. So I began to tell him about, I just felt he was loud. He was this. He said, Pastor, you know that you're a pastor. That's why you think this way for my business. I need all the attention. I need the attention on social media. He's the kind of person that wants a white PA, a Japanese. He just wants all those kind of attention. I saw him recently. This guy must have given out at least 10 cars to people I know. As gift. I saw him recently. He was an Uber driver. Uber driver. Uber driver. I said, what happened? He said, Pastor, I wish I listened to you. He said, I got exposed too early. He said, I did not understand that early exposure can lead to destruction. He said, if I had known, I would have kept my head. When I thought God was denying me, what I didn't realize is that God is hiding me. He said, the worst thing is for me, he said, it's better for a man not to touch wealth or taste wealth. He said, but when you taste wealth and lose it, it's more frustrating. He said, that's where I am today. He said, the lessons I ran away from, I'm back now, learning it. Real life story. In my note, I wrote his name there. I can't just mention it. How have his wife now? Marriage is separated. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So one of the things pain does, one of, I'm just telling about pain. And I'm saying so because if you are in pain, if you are hurting, please don't tweet. Don't post. Don't have... Because the thing is, you know, most times when people think they are healed, maybe you lost a brother, you lost your mom, or you lost somebody... I say, are you okay? I say, I'm okay. I know you are not okay. See, I'm okay is the default of people that are not okay. I'm okay is the default talk of people that are not okay. And the reason why, and let me just say this here, you know, because someone said, uh, uh, why is it not easy for people to come out and talk? The reason why is that everybody here that is hiding has spoken at one point or the other. And the people that they spoke about took what they said and used it to damage them some more. And church, I want to say something to you. I know you say you are holy, but I know you are not perfect. The way you talk about other people's weaknesses when they confide in you is not God's character. When people confide in you, show them love, not show them love and mercy. Don't backbite and gossip about them. Ah, it's very embarrassing. People will protect themselves in witchcraft. They will protect themselves in court. When you come to church, church people will fight each other. Church is the only place we kill our wounded. They came wounded though. We take knife and kill them again. Hey, the lady says she has a problem masturbating. Can she not confide in you? How did she enter the women group? The brother told you that he and his wife are going through tough time. They may have a divorce. How did it become everything that other people know? The reason why is that we have men and women within the church that looks look perfect and talk they love to look perfect but they are not and they take glory in projecting other people's failures and hiding their own weaknesses real maturity is, is that i can talk to you and you can keep it not only when we're in good terms we're in bad terms i don't know you hear me a lot of people can keep your secret when we're in good terms that's not maturity Maturity is that we stop talking. We are fighting. But the things you said to me in our friendship, I keep it. Maturity is that I will never use your secret to fight you. And unfortunately, many marriages are like that. Every time something happens, bah, you can't remember you cheated. You can't remember. 14 February 2002, where were you? We were never married that time. You cheated. I forgive you. And now it has become 
public spectacle. Don't use your partner's secret to fight them. Don't use your friend's secret to fight them. They spoke because they trusted you. And every time you want to speak, don't speak because someone is around. Speak because they are trusted. Because what happens to most people is this. When they're in an emotional state, they end up talking to someone not because the person can carry it. They are just looking for an outlet and they talk to people that are not trusted to carry the weight of what they want to say. And because they don't have the weight, the information crushes them. So when you want to talk, don't talk to ways around. When you are sick, do you look for ways around or you look for your hospital? When you want to talk, when you want to talk deep things, you don't look for ways around. What do you look for? You look for who can carry the secret. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Because it's a major thing. It's a major thing. Especially ladies. You just get upset. Next thing. Your colleague that... This is... Listen, when I heard this story, I was shocked. This lady was... Was married. Next thing, she had a husband and she, she turned to her colleague in the office, single girl. Can you imagine what my husband did? Ah, you began to tell the single girl. The single girl began to advise you. I want to ask you a question. She does not have enough intelligence even to marry. She does not have enough experience to be married. She does not have experience in marriage. Now she has become your marriage counselor because you are in pain. And that's why if you that's why it's important to develop burden bearers before you get burden. Because even Jesus Christ needed someone to carry his cross. Who can carry your cross for you? When Jesus was on his way to Calvary, the Bible says a man came and carried his cross. When your cross is heavier, you need to talk. Develop relationship of people that can carry your cross for you. They can carry it and with their mouth, they are quiet. Men, please talk. When you come to church, don't just come like that. You will pray when you come to church. Show me who, who, who is my burden carrier here. Show me. Show me who is my burden carrier. Glory to God. And the reason I said so is that part of our healing is in the talking. But the talking must be selective. Let's what you heal you begins to damage you some more. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So let me say this. Let me just I'm, oh, let me put that point together. So if you're hurt, if you're hurt, maybe you are in pain, maybe you're stuck. Please, that's not the time to post. That's not the time to tweet. That's not the, the see. If you're terribly hurt, you're damaged. That's not the time to post. That's not the time to tweet. That's not the time to have new opinion. The reason why is this: your problem can affect your perspective. I know someone that became an atheist and died as an atheist. And the reason why he was a twin. When his brother, his twin brother was dying, he did everything to make the brother come back to life through prayers. The brother died. He said, God, you don't exist. If you exist, my brother would have not died. So from today, I delete you from my mind. That guy lived his life and died as an atheist. It does not change the fact that God exists. The problem is this. When you are in pain, pain affects your perspective. You just say, all men has come. Pain has affected your perspective. Nigeria does not work for anybody. Pain has affected your perspective. Be careful. Because, and this is why you should, when you are in pain, you must be careful. Because pain affects perspective. Don't allow your tragedy change your theology when you're in pain you must learn to reject the negative lessons of the pain you go through when you're in pain you must learn to reject the negative lessons of the pain you go through never allow your tragedy to change your theology this is what i believe but because of what i went through i've changed it can we talk everybody look up here Everyone that follows God, there are things that would happen in your life. You will not know what happened. No matter how you pray and no matter what happened, you will never see to the end except we get to heaven. It's when we get to heaven that God will explain it to you that this and this and this happened. 
Some of you come to me and say, Pastor, this will happen. Listen to me. It's not all questions I have answers for. There are some things that happen that even with myself, I'm wondering what's going on here. And one thing, I've, I'm, one thing I've satisfied myself is this. Some things I will know here. Some things I will know on the other side. And I'm okay with it. Looking for answers beyond your level will only get into more questions. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Luke 4 18. So how do I heal? How do I heal? How do I heal? Luke 4 18 and Mark chapter 5. So the Bible says this, and the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Let's read the next line. He has sent me to what? So we see from the word of God, if you're broken hearted because you lost somebody, the Lord said there's healing. If you're broken hearted because you had childhood trauma, there's healing. If you're broken hearted because you were abused, there's healing. If you're broken hearted because there was rejection, there is healing. He says, he says, God has sent me to heal the broken hearted. So Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5. And this is where we're going to close in today. Mark chapter 5, how to heal. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Not verse 1, verse 25. The Bible says, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, continue please. And she had suffered many things of many physicians. I wanted to notice this woman had an issue of blood for what? How many years? 12 years. I want to ask you, how long has it been going on for? That makes you think it's permanent. The Bible says she had had an issue of blood. You don't understand. Things that stay for 12 years, people stop looking for healing. They just get used to it. And I'm saying so because if you're not careful, because the pain has been there for such a long time, you can just get used to it. But this woman is phenomenal. She was bleeding for 12 years and she was making, this woman is such an example. She was bleeding for 12 years and she was looking for solution. This is very powerful for everyone to listen to. She was bleeding for 12 years. I want to ask you, you feel so discouraged. How long have you tried in that business? Have you tried for two years? She tried for 12 years. How long have you tried to have a baby? You've tried for five years. She tried for 12 years. How long have you tried to get married? You tried for seven years. She tried for 12 years. The Bible says this woman, she suffered for 12 years. And the Bible says this, verse 26, and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and nothing better but grew worse. It, it, this, is, this, is very, this, is, this is really powerful. The Bible says she had spent all that she had. What I ask myself is this. How do you encourage yourself when everything is going down? How do you keep it going? This, we need to learn something about this woman. This woman is phenomenal. Ah, 12 years. Even our friends will tell her that, lady, give up. You are just believing God for marriage. Three years now, you have given up. You are believing God for healing. One year, you have given up. So the question is that, how do you, the question is this, if you are discouraged or you have been working on something for such a long time, how do you get to the point that you just keep going even though you feel discouraged? Hmm. One of the things I've learned is this. If you feel discouraged, I remind myself this will come and go. That problems are always temporary. I'm telling you, I remind myself that problems are always temporary, that this one will not last and it shall come to pass. I remember when. <laughs> uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I suffer though. So some of you, because some of you met us here, you don't know the amount of suffering. I will walk from University of Lagos. Our church was at Bagada. I will walk on my foot to church. It was about an hour plus walking. When I buy shoes those days, I will put protector over the shoe. Because, you know, there was a lot of walking that was done. Protector. 
You know, protector. I will put protector over the shoe. Those days, we used to use flyers, physical flyers. You know, people would just give a printer and say, print flyer for us. Me, give a printer. Where will we find the money? So, I will go and meet someone. They would design the plates. I will go to a plate. They, would, they, would, they used to print on these old plates. They used to call them cog machine. I will carry the plate, go to the printer. In the process, there's no food. You buy pure water and you drink pure water. You drink until you're full. But when I was going through that time, I told myself, and this will come to pass. And this will come to pass. And this will come to pass. One time I saw one of the people that I used, that was my, I was their customer. He said, Oga, oh long time. I said, God has delivered me. Oh. <laughs> because it was saying that you are not coming back again. I said, God has delivered me. Oh. Very soon you will say, God has delivered me. Oh. When you are going through a tough time, always remind yourself, this will come to pass. Temporary problems are what? Problems are always temporary. And think about it this way. This, this is a bit good to think about it. This is a bit good thing about it. Um, there's a lady in our church. She runs, um, I, I think it's a Kola Not Farm. And she runs a Kola Not Farm. And um, she had done it for three or four years. So I saw after the second year. And I said, ah, how far with your farm? I said, have you begun to harvest? He said, pastor, it does not work that way. When you work with Kola Not Farm, you plant, then you give it years. He said, you begin to see some results, but those are not the results because the trees are still not yielding to fruits. He said, after the fifth year, it will come to maturity. Ah, it just occurred to me. Growth comes in season. Don't pressure yourself. Growth comes in season. Don't pressure yourself. Maybe you are planting cola nuts. Someone is planting corn. Corn is a nine-month cycle. Yes or no? Ah. Uh-huh. Hope you know some other things are longer, like palm tree. How long is a palm tree circle? Who knows? What? Seven to six years. So, the pe- what? What is it? Six to seven years. So, the person that has corn will have taken corn first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. And you, your own palm tree is in the soil. By the time your palm tree begins to produce, it will produce 10 years, 20 years. People leave palm tree for their children's children as investment. The difference is that you are planting corn and planting palm tree. I can't compare myself to yourself. By the time your own harvest comes, mine has not started. By the time my harvest starts, your own harvest has finished. Growth comes in seasons. Don't pressure. Growth comes in seasons. You know what I'm saying? This some of you, you, you are tired because your business is not working. Sir, growth comes in seasons. Just keep planting. Keep watering. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. So what do you do? What do you do? When you are very discouraged. Celebrate your progress and win. This is this is something. This is let me tell you. This is something I learned that helped me. That if I can celebrate my progress, it will reduce my discouragement. Some of you are so vision driven that you can't even stop to celebrate where you are. Pause for a moment and celebrate where you are. Celebrate your small win. I know that you want to be married, but you got a promotion. Don't say, what is promotion, John? No, that is also something. Celebrate that. I, I know that you are believing for this $20 million deal, but you got a deal for $1 million. Celebrate that one. See, enjoy the journey or else you will arrive at your destination unhappy. Just celebrate it. When last did you take out yourself and say, oh boy, you're yeah, doing well though. Let's go to a proper restaurant and eat. When last? Every time I'm walking on something, I'm walking on something, I'm walking on something. Hey, I, I, yes, I'm sowing a special seed. I'm buying this book. Sow seed, buy book, enjoy your life. Take, 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 
some time. In fact, some of you are so unused to it that when they say enjoy, you feel bad for enjoying. If you want to enjoy, you hide to enjoy. See what Satan has done to you, hide to enjoy what you worked for. You feel bad. You can't tell someone that, oh, I spent 200,000 on, on a lunch. You say, 200K. Listen, I worked for it. I deserve it. It's me. I deserve it. Enjoy it. Because you can be so vision driven that you cannot slow down and say, ah, thank God. Oh. I, 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 I'm not where I used to be. Oh. I'm not where I want to be, oh, but I'm not where I used to be. Praise God. You can never say, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Slow down. After this service, there are some nice restaurants. Give me some names. What? Sick Saika. Saika, yeah? Slow. Candy. Canly. Take yourself. Celebrate. And listen, when you finish, just shake your head like a lizard. I tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. If nobody says you have tried, tell yourself what? I tried. And let's listen to me. And you have tried to survive in Nigeria. You're a big person. You're a champion. I'm telling you, to survive in this country. And you show up every day. You have tried. Praise God. Look at them and say, I've tried. Say, I've tried. Yeah. So, let me tell you something. So, the way, if you feel discouraged, if you feel very unhappy, if you feel as if things are not moving forward, all you have to do is to learn to celebrate your small wins. Your marriage is not going well, but one week, you put enough fight. Only I'm taking you out. Ah, we didn't fight for one week. Ah, things are getting better. We we'll sit down, you know. Your husband has not give you money before. Now he says, take 100k. Hey. Ha. Only come, I'm waiting for you at home. <laughs> ha. Don't destroy it by saying, what is 100k? No. Whatever gets rewarded gets what? Repeated. Your wife that used to say every time at night, I, I'm tired, my hair, you mess up my hair, I'm sweating, you are smelling. You know, this night, before you even say, hey, she said, ha ha ha. ha, -ha. Complete action film, 90 minutes, no stop. When you get up, you say, ha ha ha. For what you have done tonight, ha ha ha. The Lord of heaven will reward you. But his husband man will also say thank you. And just, and let me tell you, that's how you encourage one another. That's how you encourage one another. You got this big, 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 big breakthrough. Slow down. Ah, remove some money. Enjoy yourself. Glory to God. So how do you heal? So uh, let's read, let's read. I'm going to close quickly. Who? Let's read. back to the scripture, please. Mark chapter 5, I think we're in verse 27. The Bible says, and when she heard of Jesus, so the first thing is this, you know, when she heard of Jesus continue, she came in the press and touched his garment. Why? For she said, if I may touch by his garment, I shall be made whole. The first thing is this, she became aware she was bleeding. The first thing is to become aware. Some people know something is wrong, but they know what is wrong. The second th step to healing, these are the signs of healing. Said, first step is to be aware. The second thing, so if you are depressed, I'm depressed, I'm angry. The second thing is to accept. See, it's a, this is how I am. This is how I feel rather, not this is how I am. So, I'm angry. I'm, you, you ask some people, what about marriage? I, I can't kill myself. Oh, I cannot kill myself. I'm not saying kill yourself. But you're unhappy about it. Stop denying it. You can't change what you deny You can't change what to deny. So the first thing is awareness. Are you aware? So how do I know I'm moving towards healing? Number one, am I aware? Are you aware that you are very aggressive? Are you aware that you are very aggressive? Are you aware that you don't know how to love? Are you aware that you tend to be very depressed all the time? 
Are you aware? So the first thing is awareness. The reason why is that every change starts with self-awareness. Then the second thing about, after awareness is this. Acceptance. Acceptance is that, okay, I'm aware. This is what, I'm not denying it again. I'm not denying it again. Because the most difficult person to change is the one that denies everything. When like, how do you? I'm like, no, no, no. Okay, I'm not denying it. What have I accepted? I've accepted that this is what it is, and I'm not denying it. Question: Are you still denying? If you are still denying, you have not healed. Your mother's death affected you. Accept it. You know, I'm going to close with this. Let me just close here. Yesterday, I went to a place and I saw someone. It was we in secondary school together, and I'm sure he's watching right now. Thank you for sharing your story with me. And I just said, ah, I didn't come to church, oh, but I watch emotional healing message online. He said, I forwarded it to my whole family. He said, I want to talk to you about it. I said, let me finish what I'm doing. I thought he was even joking, just like encouraging me. He said, okay, let me walk you. I said, walked me. He said, I'm not getting emotional. I said, ah, what have you gotten emotional about right now? This is a guy, successful, runs a very successful business. And he said, I've never told you this before. My mother died at 10, but that's not what it is. He said, my mother was shot in front of me. He said, when they removed me from the side, he said, my hands were filled with her blood because I didn't know she had died. So I said, mommy, get up, mommy, get up, mommy, get up. He said, I'm at a point in my life, I hold my emotions. I don't talk. I'm afraid to talk. He said, when you share that thing, I sent it to my sister. And my sister said, we have never discussed it before. Let's discuss it now. And the reason why is that everybody has been running away from it. This thing happened, he will be 40 now, 30 years ago. As he was talking, this is just a five minutes conversation of, we were on the road. He just held me. Before I knew it, he had a hundred. <laughs> The pain was as fresh as what it was. They said, it's affected me, it's affected this, it's affected that, it's affected this. Why am I telling you this? If you want to heal, you will not heal by covering it. You are going to heal by, number one, accepting the fact that something is broken. Something is broken and I need help. That's where it starts from. Something is broken, I need help. That's where it starts from. Praise God. Were you blessed? Before we pray, I want someone to ask me a question. And Pastor John, make sure that you limit my response to four minutes. Yeah. Is there someone that is broken here and wants to, you want to share something that you're struggling with and you need some perspective on? Yeah. Anybody here? If not, it makes it easier for me. I just jumped. I'm already out of time. I just jumped to the next service. Where I can't find. Just raise up your hand. I can't see. What? Where? Okay. Yes, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, please. Good morning, Pastor B. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, I don't... I, I, I have a question to ask you, but... Sitting down here, I, I, I've heard this emotional series from beginning, even on Wednesday service, I've heard it. But there was none that really, not that they were not important, but just didn't consign me in a way because I wasn't going through what you were preaching on those emotional issues then. But I, now that you, today's preaching, Pastor Balaji, I'm not going to lie to you, from the beginning to the end, just is my life story from anything, everything you said, the examples, the perspective, the seed, the being precious in the hands of God, when God is keeping you, waiting, it just shows my life of things I've been going through and things I've gone through and things that God has showed up. It, everything was just about me today. So that's why I said, not a question, but a thank you and gratitude to just know that thank you everything i was going through that i know now i i, I can feel the tension even in your voice you know 
I can even feel the tension and just in your voice. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, thank you. That, that, that's that list. Amen. Can we get one person? You want a question to ask something you're really going through? You need the perspective on. Yeah. Just one person and we're done. We'll just take half. Thank you. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Um, so the question is, for somebody who has been through so much. You've been through so much. Uh, early ages. Yeah. What is so much? Let's say. Just hold the mic so I can hear you. What is so much? So losing your dad at like 12. Mm. And then probably emotional abuse from family members at a very What's young name? age. What's your name? Celestina. Celestina, calm down. You're trying to say something you're not allowing out. So just take your time. Look at me and say, talk. How do you become soft as a woman? How do you become softer? Yeah, so do you think you are hard right now? I genuinely think so. Why do you think so? <laughs> because normally there are things that will move girls around me that wouldn't necessarily move me. So what do you think cost it? Especially when it probably comes to like relationship relationships. Dating. I'm easy to like self isolate and mm. So know, when did, when did that start? I think it started in my mid teens. But Your mid teens. Yeah, but what I happened exactly that you think caused that? A lot. Yeah. Just about the first one. So because I lost my dad and coming from a polygamous home, there's just so much you have to like put on a front. And then there's my mom and I grew up with my mom. So I had to see so many So struggles. what happened? That there will be one time that you remember that this is the first time I had to do that. That you remember. It might be now that you remember. When was it? I think it was about last year. Yeah. I was in a relationship that could probably potentially lead to marriage. And then something happened and without me even realizing that this was what I was doing that was going to ruin that relationship, I, I just did it without thinking twice. What did you do? You just walked out? Yeah, I just walked out. Yeah. Why did you walk out? Because I felt like I was not hurt. Yeah. What were you afraid of? I was afraid of being vulnerable because when you're vulnerable to me, people tend to like take advantage of that. When were you vulnerable and people took advantage of you when you were young? I can't say. You can say? Yeah. You can say or you don't want to say? I don't want to say. Yeah. But that's where your answer is. That's where your answer is. The reason why is that your mind stores things. Your mind has a clear memory of the first time you tried to be vulnerable and what happened when you tried. It was being thrown back at my face. What is it? it was being I want to tell me exactly what happened. You don't have to tell me who or what, just tell me your own experience. So there was this one time I thought I had found a safe space with somebody and then I ended up telling this person about everything. I mean, everything that I had ever been through. And then I thought that this person really understood me. But all of a sudden, there was this one time we were having an argument and that person just, you know, said those exact same things back to my face and it really just broke me so what you what you use what you confide the secrets you confided in them with yeah became the weapons to attack you mm -hmm. yeah and how did you feel i felt bad i felt really unsafe you felt unsafe yeah so that's what you lent it what has happened to you is that and that's why i told you the i, I mean i spoke about this during the teaching remember and that's why I said, every time there's a first experience, 
and something happens, your mind stores it so that when a similar experience happens, without you knowing it, your mind makes you behave that way. You know why it makes you behave that way? Because that's what it thinks is right. If it thinks it's right, it make you behave that way. If it thinks it's wrong, it will make you run from it. Let me ask you a question. Is there an auntie that you don't like or an uncle that you don't like? Yes. That, there's someone that you don't like. Yeah. When you see them, do you feel, the, do you feel that do you feel something when you see them? It could be anger or fear. Yeah. Strong hate. Strong hate. Yeah. But you know that they can't do anything to you again right now. Yes or no? Yeah. But why do you feel that? Because your mind has taught it. So every time that person up, just like there's an uncle that was kind to me when I was young, very generous with money. Every time he calls me right now, I'm always excited. Now I'm richer than him. But my memory with him is always joy. Because you start it. The challenge is that, so this is why you feel that way. So when you find yourself in similar situations, that feelings just comes back. So now, back to your question. How do I become softer? Let me ask you one question and I'll answer. So your mom was very hard in the process, raising you people up. Yeah, she was very she, strict. She was very strict. Yeah. So that's it. The reason why your mom was strict is that, from my experience, I'm from a polygamous family, is this. Your mom was making sure that you people not disgrace her. She was very afraid. Did she say so to you? Yeah. She was very afraid. Your mom yeah. was very afraid. You will not disgrace me. You will do well. You will make me proud and all of those things. And that made her very strict. And in her being strict, she showed you tough love. She didn't show you mother's love. And that thing that you're not soft is the lack of that mother's love. Softness comes from the mother. And she didn't do it intentionally. She was just having a big, a fear took over her. And this is what you have to do. You have to expose yourself to relationships where you can be loved. Then the second thing is this. You have to love yourself. I can tell that most likely you don't really like yourself. You're very tough on yourself. You're very critical of yourself. Yes or no? Yeah. Tell me, I can't hear you. Yeah. You're very critical. So yeah, they're, you're, like, you're, you're always pulled on yourself. The first thing is to begin to love yourself. The first, how do you do that? Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. I love you. I accept you. What's your name? Celestine, right? Celestina. Tap, hold your microphone close and tap your chest this way. Say Celestina. Celestina. As you're saying it, close your eyes. See yourself as that of your old child you were. Your size, where your mother died, when your father died. I say Celestina. Celestina. I love you. I love you. I accept you. I accept you. I love you, Celestina. I love you, Celestina. And I accept you. And I accept you. I love you, Celestina. I love you, Celestina. And I accept you. And I accept you. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of love. You are enough. You are enough. God cares about you. God cares about you. Celestina. Celestina. I accept you. I accept you. Amen. What did you sense as you did that? Peace. Yeah. Did you see your younger self talking to that person? Were you able to do that? Yeah. It was tough a little, right? Yeah. Yeah. The reason why is that it was tough for you to tell you that I love you. But that's what you have to do to go back and say, I love you and I accept you. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. We'll have more sessions in the next service. Amen. Can we pray? All right, let's go ahead and stand on your feet, everyone. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this month of teaching. The Bible says that the Spirit of God is upon us to bind up the brokenhearted. Everyone here that is brokenhearted in this service online, Spirit of the living God, walking away some people are broken because of things they can't talk about some people have been abused some people have been neglected some people raped some people lost their brother lost their sister and they're crying because nobody seems to understand their pain but that's why you came the bible says we have an eye priest that can feel feel spirit of god you can feel everyone's been here please 
take those words walk it into their heart their soul their emotions and their bodies in such a way that you will experience your power to bind up the brokenhearted heal we pray you in jesus name we pray amen praise god hallelujah were you blessed this morning let's go ahead and have our sit